You're now tuned into me 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 million dollars worth of game. Yes, I'm right here with this nut, this goofy nut. I'm Wallow Two Six Seven. This is Gilly the Nut, aka the Nutcracker, aka Salty Nuts. He's just a nut. What? I mean. You heard what I said? Yeah, we gotta redo that. <laughs> Not crack AK salty nuts. We type of nicknames you coming up with, huh? All that stuff. You gotta take that call. No. Hmm? No, you, but listen, man. Man, we uh, we take we took it back to the essence for y'all because that's what the people was begging for. They said we need some episodes where it's just you on Wallow. It ain't you ain't got no guests. So mm-hmm. shit, we listen to the people, man. You know what I mean? So. It's just me and this nut ass. Yes, it is, man. Yes, it is. Let me just say something too, man. Cause um, earlier this week, man, I let some get me out of character, man. What happened? Yeah. I was around. You know, it was some chat on the clubhouse. You know, between Wack and Birdman, and when I listened, when when I listened to it, I was like, man. I really mean something to the coach out here, man. I got to start responding to, you know what I mean? I got to really start responding to this, man. Because everybody taking shots at me. Everybody taking shots at us. Everybody, because when you, you know, when you're great, it comes, that come with hate. So, mm-hmm. so, you know, sometimes, man, you got to not allow to trick you out your position, man. You know what I'm saying? I almost let it trick me out my position. I almost let it forget make me forget what I'm here for, you know what I mean? I'm here to keep these kids out of jail. I'm here to keep these kids out the graveyard, and I'm here to keep spreading this motherfucking positive message. Because when I was young and active, nobody didn't want it with me. But now I'm older, and I'm spreading positivity, and it's 25 years later. And that's close to 60 years old, want to be on Clubhouse talking shit. So sometimes I got to check myself, you know, and I got to look at another person's circumstances to really understand what's going on. And when I look at the other side and the other circumstances, I understand that the light ain't that bright over there no more. It dimmed down. You know what I mean? So when that light ain't bright and the roar of the crowd is gone, you know, some motherfuckers don't want to take their money and just live their life. They still think that there's a chance they could hear the roar of the crowd again. You're not. It's over. So um, I just wanted to tell the young niggas, man, don't let these niggas trick you out of position, man. You know what I mean? Play your part, man. And I apologize for letting niggas trick me out of position for like I didn't even see what happened. 30 seconds. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Body Armor. Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Body Armor. Real hydration, real ingredients, packed with electrolytes, vitamins, and nothing artificial. Body Armor has a great tasting sports drink flavors like strawberry, banana, and blue raspberry. Not only do we hydrate with Body Armor, but some of the best athletes in the world do as well. Like Christian McCaffrey, y'all. Oh, Christian be real. That's a bad dude right there, Christian. I ain't going to lie. You a bad dude. Touchdown, Joe Burrow. Another bad dude. Ronald Acuna Jr. Uh, a bad dude. Uh, C.D. Lamb. Much as it hurts me to say, because he plays for the Cowboys and I'm an Eagles fan, he's a bad dude. And Bryce Young, my young, and of course y'all see me playing basketball with Bryce. You feel what I'm saying? So make sure you get you some body armor. It is available in stores nationwide, but you can head over to Body Armor Store on Amazon and get you yours ASAP. I really love the body armor water. When y'all can see when I be on my live streams and all that. That's what I'm tapped into. The body armor water. I love it. Body armor. Make sure you get you some. And it's just like that. This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, uh, life ain't going your way. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. Caught your woman cheating today. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. You thought your check was coming and didn't come your way. A shot of New Amsterdam vodka is distilled five times, is filtered three times for that clean, crisp finish. And uh, most importantly, 
when you're out and about at your local liquor store, don't walk past it. Scoop it up. Get you some. It's great with juice, soda. You could drink it straight up. You could drink it on the rocks. You could make a classic New Amsterdam mule. You know, whatever you like. You can do it with New Amsterdam vodka, the official vodka bar stool. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you get you some. Shout out to my wife, the New Amsterdam queen. Make the cocktails at the crib with her girlfriends. They do it real big. You know what I mean? While me and the homies is watching football, they making cocktails. New Amsterdam vodka, get you some. Right. You know? But I, I check into it with you. But uh, the whole thing is like. You ain't yeah. need to see what happened. Yeah, I didn't, but... You wasn't going to do no checking anyway. My whole thing is... Martin Luther King. I ain't remember... Listen, I ain't going to hold you, man. Stories from the cell. Man, you getting the stories from the cell early, huh? Yeah, man, because, you know, uh, it's funny you say checking. I remember one time I called myself checking somebody in jail, and the shit went wrong. Uh, so I come out the yard one day, Doing my one two, minding my business. No, I wasn't minding my business. I caught this boy looking at one of the homies sell. Mm-hmm. I mean, just looking. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even remember seeing him too much on the block, so I don't know why he's looking in the homie cell. So I call myself checking him, like, I said, my man, why you looking at my man's cell, man? What's going on? Mm-hmm. He turned around, and the funny thing, I think the only reason that I really said this to him, because he looked at like. He just was like, he wasn't built like that. He was real meek. You know what I mean? Like they say, the meek shall have her, her the earth. He's one of them real laid back guys. Hey, how you doing? One of them type dudes. Right? So I'm like, I can get off of him. And I can feel like I, I did something on my jail my jail jacket. Like, that's what I'm thinking. But I was like, <laughs> what? No, you got to have some type. So you saw that out of ass. <laughs> thought yeah, you I was going to get one up. <laughs> yeah, that was the worst thing to do. So I said what I said. I said, well, my man don't be what's the name. He said, he said, no, no, no. It ain't even like that. I said, yeah, well, man, don't be checking, you know what I mean? Boom, 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 bang. He said, no, I ain't about nothing. So, so it was cool. Forgot all about it. I mean, I told my man, you the boy, man. I checked that, you know what I mean? Give him the whole thing. I had to check that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I checked him, man. He been, you know what I mean? All that good fly, cool street slash jail lingo. Mm-hmm. I gave him all that. He was like, damn, mm-hmm. bro, that's what's up, bro. I'm, a- I'm coming down the staircase because I'm on the top tier. So one day, I'm coming down the staircase, ready to go into the shower. Mm. So he caught you in the shower. No, 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 no. He didn't catch me in the shower. So when I come down, I got my shorts on because I always take shower with shorts on. Shorts on, flip flops, my towel over my joint, washcloth, soap case. So as I'm coming from my cell, you could be down there and you could see somebody going into the staircase. But I'm not paying no attention to him. I'm just trying to hurry up and get to the shower, you know, because you want to get in the shower as soon as it open. I mean, as soon as they open it up before the whole yard come in. So you get, you know, a nice positioning. You could be get in and out of that joint, right? I'm coming down. So when I get down, it's like you come down, you come down one tier, one flight of steps, then you come down the next one, and then you go out to the block or you keep going down to the basement because the shower's in the basement. So when I come down to the one step and come down another one, and then I'm ready to turn. As I'm ready to turn, he popping the joint. What's up, my man? Well, don't hit me like that. I'm me. telling you what he did to me. All right, but you ain't got to explain. So like he that, hit me, nigga. and he hit me on naked skin because I ain't got no shirt on. Yeah. I just got my towel over my joint. Yeah. He hit me on naked skin, like, "Yo, my man, what's up?" And he like, but when he hit me, it was like, "What's up?" And he like pushed me to the wall. I'm like, "Oh, what's going on?" Right? I peep it as him. I'm like, "What you mean, what's up?" He said, "See, what's up? Fuck you mean you ran up?" I'm like, "Oh, so now I'm off guard because I didn't think this dude was, was built like that." Yeah. So I immediately activated the white flag process. So I'm saying, what? no, no, yeah, yeah, I'm just telling you what happened. I activated that joint quick because this dude, his sneaks tied up tight and all that, he was ready to get busy. So I ain't had no win in this type of situation. I got my flip flops on. You know I mean, I got my flip flops on. You I just got my sh- on your flip flops. No, I got my flip flops on. I got my brown shorts that I shower with. I ain't got no drawers on. So, I, so I'm basically naked. I got my flip flops, my shorts, and my towel, and my soap case, and my washcloth. So I'm basically raw. So I'm like, so he hit me. So when he get on, I'm like, he came and he pussy, what? I'm like, you know what? <laughs> That's why I hit the joint. No, man, it wasn't even like that, man. If that was your homie, you would have checked this joint. But man, the way you, the way you came at me with that energy, man, I wasn't. I'm like, oh no, it wasn't even like that. That wasn't purpose. I didn't even know who it was like that. But I'm just protecting my. That was the white flag process. Mm-hmm. I activated that joint good, yeah, bitch. And, and 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 then, the funny thing is, 
what, what, what was so crazy is that I ain't even peep. I got grinded up later because I ain't even peep. A couple boys was up, upstairs looking down because they heard the commotion because they was ready to come down. So they stopped and they, and they peeped me in Jeff, Jeff mode. They peeped me bitching. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, damn, they peeped me. But it, was, it didn't matter. <laughs> I just had to get up out of that situation. I'm like, no, it ain't about nothing, man. So he's like, yeah, man, I'm just saying, man, don't never come at me like that again. I'm like, no, bro, it ain't even. Bro, you see when you activate the bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro, no, man, it wasn't even like that. So I walk down, I'm like, damn, right? Uh -huh. As I'm walking down to the shower, I'm like, what I thought when I was putting on my jacket, my resume. That, what the me, fuck your jacket so, up? Somebody put something on my resume, like he chumped me. You know what I'm saying? See, because I, I keep telling dudes, I wasn't no tough boy in jail. I, I made it through because I was funny and, uh, you know, I was inf informative, give people information, and I was just a cool dude. And to dude. a couple, it made you was sexy. No, I wouldn't say that. Yes. Nobody never told me that. They, Don't do that. Don't do lying. that. Don't put that out there. You're lying. One of them inmates said. Nobody I know. never told. You, see, you told me what one of them inmates told you. Nobody never told me that. Damn, I can imagine what them girls looking at it like. No, that. Nobody they, never you told young me that. niggas looking tender. I was like, damn, a nigga told you that. Nobody never told me that. I, I'm gonna tell you one Shit. thing though, and I never told you this, but don't. It wasn't for me. <sighs> Dude, put a love letter in the wrong cell. And yes, <laughs> and I opened it up right. Cause I'm just oh, it's just a regular regular envelope and they had no name on it. I opened that joint up, and it was a love letter, man. I I was like, oh, this is wrong. And all I did was throw it out the door. I'm like, that wasn't for me. That wasn't for me. I'm just saying. Yo, a nigga wrote you a PLL. He, 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 he didn't write me. He didn't write me that. <laughs> he didn't write me that. It wasn't for me, cause he didn't write it for me. It just came. It was in the cell. He put it in the wrong cell. Cause cause listen, I threw it out the cell, right? And and I ain't know who who wrote it. So I go to one of my old heads. That was that night they. That was that night you yourself caught on fire. <laughs> like, so, 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 so I go, I go to one of my old ways and tell him, I'm like, yo, and he knew, he knew who'd be doing them Jones. So he stepped in, he's like, no, that was for the other young boy. That wasn't for him. So that wasn't for me. So it was just wild though, man. It was, that was a wild letter, man. Hey, hey, what'd he tell you in the letter, man? No, no, it, it, this would threw me off. What did he tell you in the letter? No, no, he didn't tell me. I'm just because I only got like a paragraph and it got it got graphic. <laughs> he said no because I didn't know what was going on. Listen, on anything I love. <laughs> Wait, no, it got graphic. I'm just I'm just being real because people be lying about jail, man. I ain't gonna lie to these young boys because I don't want them to believe. That is other than what it is. First of all, he just said he got the letter and I immediately threw it out the motherfucking cell. No, 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 the, no, no, no. I didn't said, throw it all the way out. Got, I, no, I he did. He got the letter and he read it all I did. No, I ain't read it. tell you. No, the first. The, What's your prison love letter no, say? The, it wasn't mine, bro. Stop <laughs> yes, that. It was. It was not. It was he in your cell. No. What did your prison love letter say? put it in the wrong letter? cell. What did it say? And it started off. Only thing it said, pretty little thing. <laughs> it started straight like that. He said, pretty little thing, I'll be watching you. I'm like, oh man, what the? Cause you know, you wanna know the pre this. He's like, I've been watching you for a while now, just that third, when you gonna stop playing? I'm like, I knew. So I'm like, this wasn't for me. I didn't, cause listen, I I knew he wasn't talking about me. So I said, oh, this is a dangerous letter. I put it back and I threw it out the cell. And my always said, yeah, that wasn't for you. Why well, I'm just hearing this shit now, man. Cause yeah. you be taking stuff out of you, cause you'll remix it on me. I'll tell you a story. Pretty little thing. And, I, and listen, if I tell you a story off of here, You'll remix it and come on here and lie on me. Oh my He didn't call me that. It was in the it was inside it was inside of the letter, bro. Come on, man. That's you know, you always trying to make fun of the journey. You know what I mean? But So what happened after that? I talked to my old head. I told him, yo, man. Cause I always anytime it get crazy, I go to my old head. Your and, bodyguard, Kevin Costner. No, no, he had a prison you know, bodyguard. You know what you know what's crazy though? And this is the crazy joint that happened to a lot of dudes in jail. Um uh, a lot of times, especially especially in a new wave jail town. Hold on, yeah. let, me, let me I'm gonna break it down. But I, I used to always go to my old head and tell him, "Yeah, man, you know, boom, 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 boom." And he'd tell me, "Oh yeah, what's the name? Let me what's the name? Be writing them type of joints." He went to the board, said it was mm -hmm. no, that was the wrong cell, which it really was. So, come to find out, my old head was a warrior back in the day. You never see because this will be happening in jail. A lot of the old heads, they don't tell on each other. Like, because you got boys that just straight up and down warriors, right? Booty mm -hmm. warriors. Then you got boys that's underground booty, booty warriors to where's though, they be in the cut with their stuff. They not going to just come out. You, they the cool boys, still got the wife at home, mm -hmm. people coming to see them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're dibbling, dabbling the little cheeks. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so the whole, yeah, yeah. I found that out. I was like, damn. But it was late. I was, you know, I was ready to get transferred. I'm like, what? Because, because. Cause somebody said something about the old head. Somebody was saying something about this one old head. 
Yeah, man, you be just in that 30. So then more of them old heads you be on the block talking to, too. Blizzard name, Blizzard name. I'm like, oh, he said my old head name. Yeah, yeah, ask him about, ask him about when he was on what's the name block in 84. I'm like, wow, okay. It was real, that, you know what I mean? When everybody was getting dead, I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it just get real crazy, man. It get real spooky. But uh, a lot of times, y'all got to understand, I share these stories with y'all because I want y'all to learn from my story and I live my story. It's vicious in there. You know, outside Keep of just- Keep your manhood and not get that manhood out, up like that. You know what I mean? What, what you, that was the new stuff. Keep your manhood, man. You but, know what but, I mean? I'm glad you, you come home and you embrace your- you but, but, I mean? but see, and that was another- Stories from the cell. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little cha-ching or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing. However, cha-ching, Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch, your online shop stage, to the first real life store stage. All the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify helps you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one commerce platform to their person POS system where and whatever you're selling, Shopify got you covered. So wherever, whatever you're selling, it don't matter. You could be selling outdoor gear. You could be selling online soaps. You could be selling incense. You could be selling whatever you're selling. Just know Shopify, it has you covered. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklyn, and, and millions of entrepreneurs every size across 175 countries. Because business that grows, grow with Shopify. Sign up for $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash millions. $1. $1. Sign up right now. $1. Shopify.com slash millions. All lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash millions. Now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash millions. Tap in, man. You know, you put everything in Shopify, they get it right for you. Whip it, whip it, whip it. It's that easy. Shopify. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Straight Talk. A new Straight Talk wireless offering is now available where you can get a Walmart Plus membership included on select Straight Talk wireless plan for free. Only Straight Talk wireless gives you unlimited data and text plus a Walmart Plus membership included on select plans for free. Some of the perk Walmart Plus through select Straight Talk wireless plans are free delivery from Walmart stores, free shipping, no order minimum, Paramount Plus membership, member prices on fuel, gas savings. Straight Talk wireless is available at Walmart and Walmart.com. Straight Talk wireless is available at Walmart and walmart.com so when you're out and about and you need to get your phones you need to and it's cheap it's affordable it's very affordable it's unlimited data talk text plus a walmart plus membership what are we talking about straight talk i had you straight talking for a great price i'm talking about the whole family is talking for a good number what are we talking about is walmart near you you need a great plan? What you waiting on? Straight talk. Right. Now, what happened was, it was a crazy joint. I, I, a lot of time, I'm just going to be transparent today. Uh, just be a little open. What you being open about? About, a lot of times in my, 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 when me trying to be a tough guy, things ain't go right a lot of times in my life because. You was a bitch. That's no, I wasn't. I wasn't. See, see what it was is, I was actually smart. But in the hood, you got to be tough in order to, you either got to be tough or get a bunch of money for people to deal with you or respect you. So I had to front like I was tough. So a lot of times it went wrong. Mm -hmm. Prime time, prime example. We was down, bro, back in the day for the young kids that don't know this, in Philly back, it was a spot called Club McDonald's, Broad and Diamond. We used to be down there. Mm -hmm. So me and a couple homeboys from my own neighborhood, we down there, we were about like six deep. We sitting on the porch, on, on, the, on the church steps right there. You know where the church was at. Mm -hmm. We vibing, chilling, doing the one twos. So some bull 
was looking at us as we was named. So me and somebody else chiefed up like, what, man, what you looking at, man? That's yeah. your tough face when you. I mean, all that, right? Mm-hmm. He looked at us all crazy, and then he then went around the corner. So next thing you know, we sitting there talking. Before you know it, I'm leaning on the car, mm-hmm. right? See, back in the day, a lot of dudes, they had their pieces on it. They ain't had no piece on it. Dude might have, it depends, you know what I mean? It depends on, you know, what your weapon of choice. Dude might have a little knife on him. Little, I used to rock the, the brass knuckles, right? <laughs> what? Yeah, they was the joints. They was the joints, so I... So I got me little brass knuckles, right? They wasn't brass, they were silver joints though. You know what I mean? I had some silver knuckles, but it's the same thing. They joints you put on here, metal, you know what I mean? You get busy with, right? Cause brass knuckles. I said, yeah, no, nah, yeah. Yeah, so. You definitely wanna hang with no, me with no brass knuckles. This is just. No, you wasn't even there this day. So it went, it went crazy because I'm leaning on the car talking to a little honey dip, right? A little Slimmy. So we kicking it. All I see, cause I'm right here on the car, they like on steps, parked car. All I see is them, the ball coming, and he pointing like, yeah, right around here. But if I wasn't there, nobody would peep. So I'd be, I'd peeping him, I'm talking to the sling, I'd peep him coming around, and then I'd peep like, it was a bunch of balls with him. Mm -hmm. Like at least like 10 of these balls. As soon as I peep, I'm like, yo. I'm like, because everybody, I'm like, oh, let's get, let's get out of here, the balls come. So by the time I get, I turn around, I damn near ran shorty over. I had to catch her like it was almost ready to, and just push it to the side. So I'm breaking. As so you I'm breaking, ran in front of the bitch. Yeah, I got like, <laughs> listen, I only got three cars. I only got three cars away. Listen, trip. Listen, peep game. I trip because I go, as I run, I go to pull out my brass knuckles, like to grab my brass knuckles. But when I go to grab them, I'm pulling them out. That, that slowed me up and made me trip. I trip, scratch my knees all up. And when I trip, as soon as I'm like falling, boom, the brass knuckles drop. Man, that ball stood over top of me, kicked me. First, he kicked me in my ass. Poof. I'm like, because I'm laying on the ground like this. I feel like this ain't even happened to you and you was with me, man. Listen, I'm laying on the ground. I'm like, hold up, bro. No, it ain't even like that. Always white flag. You got to put the white flag petition immediately. <laughs> Hopefully, you get it, get approved to get a pill. So I'm like, hold up. No. He like, he grabbed them brass knuckles. He's like, shut up. You try to, I mean, y'all try to be tough. I'm like, they, other boys chasing my homies. They chasing them. <laughs> they chase, they was a wreck. He got me by himself. It's just me and him. I call myself trying to move. I try to like, because he put, he trying to put the joints on, but was, thank God, he had fat fingers. He was like a little chubby boy, so he couldn't put them on his fingers. I'm like, bet. He had them right here. So I try to, I try to like move. He kicked me on the man. Shut up. Hit me in body shot. Boom. With his money. Man, he said, yeah, you was going to put these on. What you going to do with these? So he got him right here. I'm like, just please, please don't, please don't, right? I'm like, no, it ain't even like that. Cause I'm like, I, I'm like, damn, he might break my jaw or something. I don't know, right? I'm like, he might wire my jaw up, man. And that was my fear growing up, getting my jaw wired. I yeah, see, I see, we the, seen a lot of things. Drinking it, eating soup. No, I'm saying, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so Pete, so Pete, he's swinging, right? He hit me in my biscuit the first mm. time he hit me. That thing cut my, my tip open. Mm. Listen, I was literally. Squilling and leaking like a pig in the slaughterhouse. <laughs> I'm talking about because you can feel it. You can feel it when that when it hits you when that blood hits you hits your hand. I'm leaking and squilling. Hey, he hit me. Shut up. And you know how they throw you throw the fake punches. Yeah, yeah. I hit you. Yeah, yeah. I'm like that, right? I'm leaking. I'm talking about. I swore I was a pig in the slaughterhouse, man. Upside down, leaking out, right? He's a bitch. No, no. So, so. <laughs> the whole time, five O saved me mm. because they seen the commotion mm -hmm. and they was around the corner. So somebody must have peeped. Oh, you heard boop boop. You know how to jump boop boop. Mm -hmm. He got it. He got it. Walked away. Mm. I got up. I'm all leaking. I'm, I'm telling. I'm leaking. You know you're leaking. You got to catch that joint. When you stand up, you got to catch the blood. <sighs> My tip. I'm telling. You, he did brain surgery on me. It was. I had like three, four nicks. They was gush. They was gashed open. I'm like. <sighs> That's when you breathe hard. all warm. And shit. That's when you breathe hard. The cop like, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm That's cool. That's when you feel your heart beat in your head. <laughs> he like, he like, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. I wanted to say, no, please help me. <laughs> help me, take me to this joint. But I had, to, I had to tough it out, right? Went over there, man, took my shirt off. Wrapped bitch. it up, my mouth did. No, because you know. As you with a t-shirt on your mouth. On my biscuit, bleeding like, a, bleeding like a wild hog. 
I'm telling you, man, it was crazy, man. I mean, you, you, I mean, but you laughing. What about the time when the boys chased you for thirty blocks? You got chased for thirty blocks. Chased when you me went to go see the girl UJ and, and, and Zeddy, when y'all oh, went no, to go no, see no. the girl, you got chased for thirty blocks. You got chased for thirty blocks. Come on, man. You talking about me, Lisa? Everybody, listen. One thing about me, I always had a track game. Only people that mostly caught me most of the time was the police. I, I forgot about that. I had a vicious track game. Yo, we went up the motherfucker. Yeah, we went up the uh, German. We got on the twenty three. Went up to Germantown and Colter. Me, Zeddy, and my cousin Jay. Now, my cousin Jay was from South Philly. This was his first time up North Philly ever. We was like 14 and shit, maybe 13, some shit like that. We go to, we get on the 23, we go right up there. We get off of Germantown and Colter. As soon as we get off the fucking, the, the bus, you just look down the block. It's just all these down there. So I'm like, bitches live down there? So they like, yeah. So I'm like, oh no, man, the is gonna be right in front of them bitches' houses, man. We come, what's the chances, dog? We coming to well, see why y'all kept going? I'm we, we coming to see some 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 girls, and it's all young <laughs> piled up right here. That's down how you should block. be in neighborhood. So it's like, I was like, oh no, man, that's uh uh-uh. uh. Them, what you scared? You bitching? All right, come on. As soon as we walk down there, where was the standing at? In front of the bitches' cribs. So now. We we go on the porch. They come out. Now these got us trapped inside these bitches' cribs. Come out, come out. She like, hold on. I'm about to get my dad to walk y'all to the bus stop. So we like, all right, babe. yo, yo. Why did y'all leave? What you mean? Because if they saying come out, come out, why are you like? I'm, I'm waiting these because boys it out. was dangerous. We well, getting the well, fuck. Why, out. No, why you ain't go through the back door? No, ain't no back door. What the back doors? Fuck you mean you tell me about? no alleyway? You there was no. The alleyway of Germantown and Cold wasn't one of them type of joints, man. Her pop said he was gonna walk us to the motherfucking bus stop, man. No, it we, is. We walked to the bus stop. We thinking, oh, that's a fucking pop. We cool. Zeddy like, yo, you know we know you. You be up. He talking to the one boy. You know we know you. You be right at the motherfucking, um, the shit up Hunting and Park. Boys and Girls Boys Club. Boys and Girls Club. You, you, he like, yeah, I do. All right. So what that mean? Get out the way, Mr. Gerald. Hold on. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> he got a respect for the pop. Now they surrounding us. It's three of us. It's like 12 of them. If a cop was round by, would you would have flagged him down at that moment? I was, I'm just saying, I be real. <laughs> okay, I'm just <laughs> being real. Okay. You Hell, yeah. Uh, you, you seem like you <laughs> chased the shit out of us. So you, so, so you left the home? Like, how did, who left who? What do you mean? Bro, you mean who left who? When it's, when it's four chasing the, a all right, but what? Well, what anybody just, four <laughs> chasing one anybody jump or anybody? Yeah, they jumped towards you. <laughs> and you ain't helping. I didn't see it. I was getting <laughs> you skinny. What the fuck you talking about? I was getting fucking skinny. You ain't what the fuck wrong with you? We thought we was cool. All right, they pop walking, and they ain't give a fuck about her fucking papa. Pop was a bitch ass, and I just want to say that man, you's a bitch ass man. Them kids, they was kids, man. You was a grown ass man. They ain't even give a. Fuck you was a grown ass man. They started chasing us like that. We thought we was cool because you was the fucking pop. Imagine, imagine you walking some fourteen year old motherfuckers to the bus stop and oh no 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 I, no I'm uh, I'm running too because I'm not even bitch. Cause they got guns. I got brass knuckles. They got this was back in the day. How many kids was it? It was twelve at I'm, least. I'm running too. Oh, well, he's a bitch. Listen, man, I was that age and I was getting goofy. Fucking bitch. Like, come on, man. Yeah, but they caught Jay. They, yeah. They fucked. They beat the star. Nothing off happened to you. So nothing happened to you. I just fucked up. Dog, uh, how many drinks we been on together? Has anything ever happened to me when you was with me? No. No. You always get caught when you're not with me. I think you set me up a couple oh, times. What you know? You just got fat, heavy feet. Yeah, my I get skinny game. When it's time to get skinny, I get skinny, man. I'm I get skinny. I get the fuck up out of there when it's time to get skinny. Uh, fuck you talk about. I, I always think, was I think, an I athlete. Think, I, think, family, I, think you, I think you I think you ran on cousin Jay. No, cousin Jay ran too. We all got skinny. Me, cousin Jay, and Zeddy. We'd have had the rumble, man. You'd have left me for dead oh, like that. No, 
cousin Jay was one of the main ones. Wanted to see them bitches. But you scared? All right. See, you're in North Philly. from South Philly. You're playing these North Philly games. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you don't know shit about North Philly, cuz. You're you from South Philly. It's your first time up here. That was his welcome to North Philly. They beat the shit starter jacket man, off, I've been chased my whole life, man. Huh? I've been in so many track star moments. I remember so many moments. From Southwest to South Philly to Uptown, I'm talking about it was crazy. Because you was a bitch. Was no, super. I just I just see danger when I'm walking down the block and I see them boys, I cross over. If I cross over and somebody else cross, oh yeah, it's ready to get busy. <laughs> <laughs> he coming. You just run. I'm trying to get out of sight. As soon as I get to hit that block, pew, they come, I'm all the way down at the corner. I see him, I knew that I was on point. I've never been wrong once. Right, never. So, so it just be like. So you just smell danger like a pit bull, huh? Phew. Huh? He's a bitch. Let me ask you a question, man. Cause I'm I'm scrolling down the gram. Everybody looked the same, man. Is BBLs overrated? What do you mean? Is they overrated now? When you say overrated, break it down. I mean everybody. Everybody looked the same. I'm not gonna say the overrated is all about your taste because that small that small waist with them big cheeks. That's you know. I don't think there's overrated. I think people people like that. So what you trying to get to? No, I'm asking. You don't think you don't think you don't think it's some out here that want that want some regular chicks back? Oh no, it's always gonna be that. People get burnt out. People, I think I think on some real stuff. I don't even think if they want regular or what we ever consider the regular. I just think. No, it's just a regular chick, man. I got I got a little stomach that God gave me. I got I, you know, I, I ain't. So you know what's crazy? People get on these shows and all that stuff, and they say that, but they don't be. But all the all the pictures you see, they like it, and they be them chicks. Mm. So you can't. It's all about if a person being real or, or not with themselves. I think people would deal with whoever, it, whoever want to deal with them and whoever. You know, I think they could be compatible with. But no, because I know, I know, I know a bunch of who was in solid relationships, man, and then they 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 lost their relationship to a BBL, man. What do you mean lost their relationship to BBL? They 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 was in a solid relationship, man. Oh, they check had, out a BBL and went crazy. No, niggas, no. And it, it was in a solid relationship. He had a woman that held him down. She was a she was a, a good girl, all that. You know, maybe had a kid by him, couple kids by him. Now, you know, she she's only a of of a thought of what she used to be. But then and now, break up, and now his new bitch is BBL'd up. Whew. You know who I'm talking about. I'm stressed the fuck out, man. You're going stress in me street. And it's like, damn, dog, you had a good woman, bro. What the fuck you leave that for? But uh, you can't just say women. I mean, you left that for a look. It's women. No, it's women. Because this woman don't make you happy. We know that. We tell them all the time, this woman don't make you happy. You was with somebody that made you happy, made I know, you smile. But, but this old twist, the thing is, at the end of the day, we can't just say that as is, is he good. did because he used to but be no, like, I'm just saying, my bitch no, don't look saying, the same. That's though. his situation. But BBL, a chick that got a, a, a you know, a BBL, a chick that don't, it ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with being a good woman the, or bad one. No, good I, woman I, with BBLs. No, I, I didn't say that. I'm oh. just saying he had a good woman for him. The woman that he with now, who he was, oh man, because I'm only speaking from this standpoint because I seen the transition. Yeah, man, my bitch, man, she a little, she got to keep telling her she got to get to the gym. And then, yeah, because my new bitch, she. Because, because the person you talking about, he's not in shape. So why is it, why is it that he talking about, like, you understand? Yeah. I got to, like, dudes be talking about they want somebody to be this way, this way. They got a gut. Right. They got booty do. Right. They belly sticking further out than they booty do. Hey, hold Wait, no, I'm not saying that in the wrong way, but I'm saying they got a big what? ass belly. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that in the wrong way. Don't try to get me. <laughs> it's all the wrong way. No, I'm not saying that. Okay. All right, pause. Whatever that pulls oh to be. My God. All right, Cam. You know what I mean? I'm not Cam. Oh, yeah, I say not on duty, not on first duty of all. Still. We don't say the word pause. That's 20 years ago. It's not on duty. But what I'm saying is, dog, you just was talking about a man talking about he got booty do. No, but I'm, but, I'm, what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is, a dude to be out here talking about how they want a chick to be this and the third, they got more gut than her. That's what I'm saying, though. 
That's all I I'm trying to get to the point. I ain't judging the man stomach and ass. I ain't saying <laughs> so it like I that. Bro. I don't know where we going at with this. I'm not saying. <laughs> I said, listen, I said they belly stick out more than, than the girl booty do. And they worrying about, and they worrying about, that ain't, that ain't, ain't nothing cool. <laughs> Come That's on, not man. what you said. That's what I said. <laughs> That's what I said. No, I did. I said that. <laughs> you I said, said that. You be acting like they was something they ain't got. They stomach me. No, I'm not they saying got like booty that, do. What, what is it called? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you know. What is it called? Booty do? <laughs> yeah. They, 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 Yo, yeah. You said they got booty do. Talk about the, your stomach thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, I ain't say it like that. See, you lying on me because I didn't even say it like that. I said it. I said that your belly bigger than the woman, woman cheeks. I ain't say nothing about, come on, man. You mixing my little more words up, man. You always doing this, man. I did not say that, man. Anybody watching can say, damn, Wallow ain't say that. Ain't going to say that. Watch in the comments. You just, it, it's just crazy with you. I'm, all right. I'm, I'm cool, man. I'm no, because you lying on I'm me, back, man. man. That was crazy. <laughs> you lying on me, man. <laughs> you lying on me, man. <laughs> that was crazy. Nah, you lying on all me. All right. Whew. All right. What was we talking about, though? You think this? You think that? You think y'all, you know, man? You just shot it. You just lied to me, man. Dog, no, did we rewind the tape by now? No, then they gonna we, see what I said. Yeah. Oh my motherfucking god, man, that was fun. That was crazy as shit. You know, I don't even play them games. You know, for me to say not on duty, you really got to say some crazy shit. Like that was crazy. Whew. I was just yeah, trying to explain crazy. something. But yeah, man, I, you know, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of women out here that feel what I'm saying. That lost they lost a man to a BBL, man. He's out here be going off of looks, man. They not going off the hook no more, man. Bro, we talk to this. That's the word. Yeah, we do. We be, we, we be around. Man, that man, bitch back, man. Yeah. I want that bitch, man, that bitch back. Uh... She fucked the whole industry. But dudes sometimes only want the girls that everybody else got. But that's how niggas be talking. So it'd be like, damn, dog. And all the chicks that they be talking about look all the same. They don't be no regular chicks. And like, oh, she just, she just, oh, she's a nurse. Or she's just a, oh, she just, no, all of them be the same. All of them. I ain't going to say it because they're going to be mad at me. I'm not going to say it. Don't say that, Gilly. Don't, don't say, say it. Don't, don't say, say nothing that. that's going to be. Don't say that, Gilly. Don't say it. All right, but move I'm on. I'm not going to say that. Now. But all of them that they be looking at, be they all look the same. We can agree on that? No. They don't be looking the same? Everybody got their different style. When they get naked, they all look the same. What are you talking about? The cheek area? Stomach cheek? <laughs> yes. Well, they all look like this. That's a great way. It's a great way to look. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying. I just think it's starting to be a little overrated, man. Everybody look the same, man. That's yeah, they, all. They got to do what's best for them, though. Yeah, that's cool. Well, yeah, I'm just saying everybody look the same. Shout man. out to the big girls out there, you big sexy girls. I see y'all. Yeah, shout out yeah. to all the girls out there, all the you skinny beautiful. ones, the big no, ones. You, no, because we be missing all you big sexy girls out there. Shout out to y'all with love. I have to throw that out there. You know what I mean? Man. You see how they be when they see me. Yeah. I don't play. I, you know what I mean? You're a big girl magnet. Yes, I am. Mm, you know what I mean? BGM. They, they see me. They go. And I go crazy right along. Come yeah. here, girl. You're a BGM. You know? they, love to, they love to throw the puppies up on yeah, you. Yeah, they throw them puppies up what on me. Smother me real quick in the airports, all type of places. Oh, puppies be all on the fence. Come here, Wilder. Leave Wilder alone. They, they, they all, uh, the big girls run up on Wilder. They I'll got go the right titties to, smashed I'll together I'll go like right, this. They grab me. I go right to sleep. <laughs> Go right to sleep on them puppies, them joints, man. <laughs> they love throwing T them titties on you, titty especially city. at the airport. Oh, yeah, the airport, Titty City. They you know what I mean? They don't play. They asked me about my wife and then threw the titties on. Low. How you doing? I love to. Why love? I'm sorry, my titties are all on you. <laughs> I mean, I go right to sleep. <laughs> Standing you up. You're BGM, man. What? Big girl magnet. Yeah, they love me. They love you. I love y'all, too. Do you? What's mm -hmm. the biggest girl you ever been with? Mm. How much you weigh? Another hat? Cause I don't what the fuck you doing, man? Probably about like uh, 
Nice ass. Fuck is that? Was it 300? No, less than that. 275. Maybe. I ain't sure. Not that. I don't know. How big is that? It depends. I don't know. Man. But I remember it was a CO chick. She was a. Big, yeah. big CO, huh? This, this big Shirley, girl. huh? No, she was a tenderoni. She was thick. I'm talking about that. She, her body was nice. And um, we used to flirt back and forth. You know what I mean? See ya. You, you ain't getting no ass, man. You said we used to flirt. What the fuck is no, that? No, I ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't score, but. It's any of those fucking seals. You ain't getting no, no, no ass. No, I told you. You know I had a different situation. Uh, but but this but this one, she was a, you know what I mean? Tenderoni, boy. Whew. She was a pretty tender, man. Thick. You know, she gave you was conversation. That's all I needed in there. Uh, she look, to, no, we, sh- we, what? No, we used to talk smut here and there. But you had some ass in there? Yeah. You already knew that. People, you know what I mean? Oh, but, yeah, I forgot Ricky Minaj. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Come on, man. I forgot you had some ass in there. No, come on with all that. Up. But uh, she, was a, she was a cutie. I used to look forward to seeing her, man. She'd come on the block, had that smile. She she had that good smelling perfume. She always, man. Like, she just. What was her name? No, I can't say her name. Why? Wow. I ain't saying all that. You home now. I know, but she's still in the system. The f- that means she only used to talk to you. She ain't give you no ass. I just told you we used to talk about smut and all that. Chill, man. Trying to get her fired, man. You just snitch. What the f- out of here. She could talk to you. No, she can't talk smut. That's outside of the, the, the rules of professional. Well, so, so what you used to be talking? Yeah, because I, I lick you from your ass. No, she used to be like, yeah, yeah, I did. I lick you from where it's pink to where it's stink. Because she'll come to the uh-huh. she'll come to the cell, be passing mail out, right? I flash your hand there, you know what I mean? Get a little flash going off. You know what I mean? So you that made you happy flashing your dick on us <laughs> Yeah. At that time, you know what I mean? I was in the joint, so it was like she'd be passing. So you'd be in the window, here she going, here she going, here she going. She passing And then she used to have his He's lip- a maniac, man. She's a, she's a, <laughs> on she, used to, she, she used to have lip gloss. Oh man, I used to imagine getting a chewy. <laughs> so you know, so you know now that you out here and you popping, she be somewhere with the family. I mean, he used to flash his piece. No, I ain't never run into her. No, she be telling her family that now. She be like, yeah, you know why? I love you think so? I never ran into nobody that said something yeah. about her. But I'm, but I he used to flash me his piece. I never ran into nobody that ever said anything. She might have. She might tell him that. But now they know because she could say, didn't I tell you that? I mean, he was flash going up the joint. But damn, that was the days, because I used to you be- used to flash everybody, huh? Anybody walk past your cell, peek him. He's a man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had a couple flash shows, but not that many. <laughs> Probably like three or four. That was it. It wasn't like it was a bunch. <coughs> but when you be- When Big Cookie looked and you flashed him? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Nope. Uh-uh, I, I put a sheet up. No. <laughs> Nigga was flashing everybody up to prison. Man, you know, it's just like- just reminiscing, man, thinking about the good old days, man. I had some times, man. I had some good mem- memories, you know what I mean? But I'm going to say the sad thing about this, though. Um, you know, a lot of people be out here, they be moving and grooving, especially the young cats, young Thundercats. Uh, most of my memories of my life, the sad thing I'm going to say to y'all, and this is why I always tell y'all it costs too much to be a criminal. Most of the memories of my life is from jail because I, I, I gave my choice away. When I say I gave my choice away, I gave my choice away to go in the refrigerator, to go on a date, to go when I when I jumped into the street game because I wanted to be accepted by an idea. I wanted to be accepted by an idea of what being cool was, what what being being accepted by this idea that was fake. The idea of real, the idea of the street culture. And what happened was, I know a lot of y'all be like, damn, why are I always talking about prison while most of my life I was there in even prison or juvenile facilities? So I don't have a lot of the stories and a lot of the stuff that y'all might have because y'all lived a real life. I didn't get a chance to do that because I gave that up because I wanted to be down and I wanted to participate in the street culture. That's why a lot of times I try to lay some game on the youngest out here so they can understand. Yeah, we laugh. Yeah, we joke. But the reality is most of the things I say, most of the things I relate things to, most it connect back to prison because that's where I spent most of my life at. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about it. I'm 44. I spent five years in the juvenile system in 20 years in prison. That's 25 years of my life. You do the math. Now, a lot of people always say, why are you always, t-? I ain't gonna never stop talking about the joint because it might help somebody understand what's going on and why they shouldn't be there or why it's not cool when they out here moving and shaking. A lot of times I'm, I'm, I'm basically talking to the youngins 
But sometimes I need the older cats, it's my age, Gil age, a little younger, to get this because you got a lot of people out here reliving their second childhood and they running around here like the young boys and doing a bunch of dumb shit also. Some of them is doing just as the same dumb shit as these young boys. A lot mm -hmm. of times we look at the young boys and people be ultra critical of them, but you really can't judge them because they really don't know. Mm -hmm. But when you know, you're supposed to grow. Mm -hmm. And when, you, when you're looking at older cats, the fathers, the uncles, the big brothers, the cousins, the grandpops, they still out here trying to shake and bake, move and groove. Come on, man. Think about this shit. This ain't what it was. This ain't the 80s. This ain't the 90s. The game messed up. It's twisted. Like, you know what I mean? You know if you get locked up again, you're done. Mm -hmm. You know you know you're done. Mm -hmm. So I share my story with y'all so y'all can learn from my story and don't live my story because ain't nothing I did was cool. Mm -hmm. You never hear me try to glorify it as a badge of honor that I sat in a cell for 20 years that's dumb. That mean I committed a crime and they caught me and I went out like a nut. You know what I mean? And wound up doing a bunch of time for a couple seconds of my life. Think about it. Less than a minute. All the crimes I did probably won't even add up to a minute when I was in the act of it. So you think about that. So I'll just be trying to sprinkle the game on y'all, give y'all some wisdom, and hope y'all listen. If you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. Neff, mm -hmm. I told you, if you don't remember this, you know, when you're ready to do some dumb shit, you're going to remember when you're sitting in the cell. Right. Or you're going to remember when somebody shoot the shit out of you and you're bleeding out on the curve mm -hmm. and you almost, you know, you're ready to expire. Mm -hmm. So I just share that with you. But like, at the end of the day, it costs too much to be a criminal and right. uh, ain't nothing cool about going to jail or getting locked up or right. all that. You know what I mean? Right. Shout out to all the kids out there, that's, uh, the youngins out there that's going out there getting the education. They, uh, they're going through the pressure of not having because their mom and them probably won't have. So mm -hmm. they don't have the latest gear. They don't have the latest stuff. But they still staying 10 toes down and getting the education and being somebody better than who, you know, the people that they see in the environment that's operating outside of the law. Um Mm -hmm. I know it can become hard because you want things, you see things, and maybe your parents can't provide. But one thing they provide that's the most important thing that the parents can provide is love. Mm -hmm. It's compassion. Talk to them. It's consistency. Mm -hmm. It's uh, education and wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because a lot of times people look at their parents out here, and if they can't buy them certain things, they look at them like they less than. No, your mom might be trying. She might just be working enough to pay the bills. Uh, your dad might just got out the joint, or he might not be in a position to buy you this new iPad, to buy you the new iPhone, to buy you these Jordans off of gold or whatever it may be. So um, I just say the most, the greatest thing a parent can ever give a kid is love. And if you could do that, you, you're extraordinary parent. If you mm -hmm. give them education, you give them wisdom, you're extraordinary parent. Anything else, the plus, that's a plus. All this extra, the design mm -hmm. of clothes, the sneakers, the, the electronics and all that, yeah, that's cool and dandy, but what if they couldn't? If they can't, you still got to be able to be thankful for the love that you get, because there's so many of us that don't have fathers and mothers out here. So you just got to be really thankful, man. But uh, and to all the young out there, man, respect your life, man. Yes. Respect your life. These young motherfuckers in Philly, they acting like like when you die, you 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 gonna come right back and live again, like like you just like you get like you could die twice and shit. like then then you know I scroll down Instagram, you see these young getting 45 and 60 years and just posting them up top but hold your head dog you be back no he not he ain't coming back y'all talking about he's dying in prison man yeah y'all tripping man y'all caught up man and y'all really need to understand that you you don't die twice man Y'all, motherfuckers is out here expiring like like that shit is cool. Like it's more it's more mothers and fathers burying their kids right now than it's ever been, man. And y'all acting like it's cool, man. Y'all acting like it's cool to die. It's cool to get 70 years. 60 years. 40 years. I got to tighten up, man. For real, man. Tighten all the way up. Because, tighten all the way the fuck up, man. Because uh, them days in the joint. And then you know what's sad? I'm seeing a lot of young cats, man. They going, the first time they get locked up, that's the first time they got locked up and they doing a long bit. They going in catching 40s and 20s. Right. The first time. And that, you know, like at least me, I ain't saying it was cool, but they prepared me for the penitentiary because I was doing a year here, two years here. I was doing them little juvie bits. And it prepped you to start doing big time. You know what I mean? And um That shit I be seeing in Philly, man, that should be sad, man. It's sad, man.
be getting football numbers, man. Be posting them on the gram, talk about they be back. Don't worry about but it, no, he be dude, back. But, but, but He's but not see, this, coming this back. This the thing. We got to stop normalizing certain things. They don't be getting them. They be, they be, they be, uh, they work generate them numbers for them. All right. They sliding and gliding. Um, All right. A lot of people do that. And then a lot of times you see dudes on the gram talking about, oh, they treating them wrong. They treat, bro, you was out here slower than people. What right. you mean they treating you wrong in jail? All right. Just do your time and stand on that. And the reality of it is you just got 40 years at 20 years old. By the time you're 27, guess who you ain't going to be talking to no more? And that's a long time. It might not, you might not even get to 22 before you talking to them, any of them no more. They forgot about you. They out here having kids. If they still living, they couple out here. A couple of them going to hit his baby mom. A couple of them going yeah, to fuck your baby mom. Who that is? That's baby leg. That's uh -huh. baby leg. That's baby leg. Baby leg going to come. Yeah. A couple of them going to be dead. A couple of them going to be sitting up there with you. And then, then, then it going, then it take for you to be in jail, and you, you two, three years in with thirty seven left to go to realize you was a fucking goofball, you was on some dumb, shit. you was a g o h acting goofy out here. Mm. Come on, that's man. Real. Tighten the fuck up, man. And that's real, man. Tighten the fuck up, man. For real. I ain't doing no, and don't nobody want to say that. I mean, it's like... Phew. No, I'm going to say something. Because at the end of the day, we're going to tell y'all because we give a fuck about y'all. And, and you know what's real? I'm going to say some real shit. It's like, you know, uh, a lot of people see things. You, you know, you got kids, you talk to them. Sometimes your kids listen, sometimes they don't. And, uh, you know, uh, you got you to gotta put yourself in the right positions out here, youngins. Because sometimes affiliation will lead to incarceration or it can lead to death or whatever it may be. I think, you know, for me personally, you know, one of the hardest moments and one of the hardest things I ever had to do was uh was tell Kez that cheese ain't gonna be here no more. Um that was hard for me because it was like, you know, you know, when it took place and he told me what happened, I was in shock because I was like, what? I said, geez, got shot. No, I, you know, I'm not thinking about it. I was in the, I never forget I was in the bathroom. Gil knocked on the door. He's like, yo, man, he, his head was down like, man, cheese got, I said, what? So we run to the car. I'm like, what, you know, what we're, we're part of the city? So we already know what hospital. We shooting to the hospital. We got a family member that's in the police department. I call and put him on the three-way. I said, Gil, you know what I mean? Such and such on the phone, man. I said, I tell him what happened. He said, no, I'm going to check into it right now and see what's going on. Boom, boom, boom. You know, once I hang up, he called me back and said, don't put Gil on the phone no more. I said, all right, so I'm so we driving. And when we damn. When we driving, we call him, he like, I'm gonna find out. He tell me, yeah, they got shot, boom, boom, boom. So we go to the hospital, he like, I'm gonna keep you posted. We in the hospital, and my phone gonna vibrate. I ain't wanna put it on ring. I see, I see so Gil over there in the corner. Tyra's mom over there in the corner, a couple of the homies in there. I get that call. He called me, he like, he tell me on the phone, he's like, yeah, man. He going. I said, damn. So I put my face down and I go to walk out of the, walk out of the hospital because we in an emergency. Gil see me. I said, damn. Cause I'm like, I'ma leave and they gonna have to tell him in the hospital. Cause I, 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 so I walk out, Gil come out and he like, cuz what's up cuz what, what's going on? What, what like, what's up? Cause he peeped me, he peeped me, put my head down. That was the worst thing I ever told anybody. Uh, and I was like, man, geez, go on. And I never seen him like that. So it was like, and some type of way, I felt fucked up because it was like, it was like I, I had to tell him the worst shit ever. So I felt some type of way. Like it wasn't that I was responsible, but the fact that I told him that shit, that's the worst shit ever. So when I told him that, I had to walk away and then and he was talking to me, telling me. So Gil just walked away. He was just fucked up. And so I was so hurt because it was like, Damn, man, I told him the worst shit in the world. So 
We was there for a while. I leave the hospital. I'm like, all right, I got to leave. I go to the crib and I'm just fucked up. Because I'm like, I had to tell him that shit. And uh, the next day I called Gene. I'm like, damn. In the morning, I'm like, what's up with him, man? Is he all right? He going through it. So I said, I got to, at that moment, I was like, whatever I do, I got to be able to put my emotions and my feelings on hold in order to take care of cuz. And I had to be like, and it was strange. I said, damn, I got to make sure cuz get out the house. I went to the crib. I got him. I'm like, yo, come on. We got to bounce. We got to, was like, I said, come on. We got to get out of here because there was so much going on in his mind. I'm like, we got to get up out of here. I got him out the crib. I got him to the studio. And I just was calling people like, yo, all the brothers I knew. I was like, because it was too much for me to go through. And I'm like, I can't really do this shit by myself because I'm like, I can't really feel right now because I can't be selfish on the aspect of I can't even, I can't even really truly mourn about cheese because I got to make sure Gil all right because I told him the worst shit ever. And then I'm processing like, damn, I'm just trying to get as many homies over here as possible to the studio. Like, come over, come over, come over, come over, come over, come over. I called a thousand boys, man. Dude showed up. And I did it day after day, day after day to try to make a better situation. But it was like, cheese wasn't coming back. And it was like, I had to stay away from it. It was hard for me to face cuz for a while. So I would keep my distance. It'd be like, it's fed up. Cuz. <sighs> no, I appreciate you for that too, cuz. It was like, I'm trying to help him. And I can't, I can't even, I can't even, I can't even just, it was like I felt fed up for telling him that shit, man. And it was like, <sighs> the homies came through though, and made, the family came through and just try to help him. They helped him out so much. He was laughing. And I'm calling the Tootie back and forth, and I'm telling you, yeah, he, he laughing, he cool right now. He, but it's an in and out. It's going in and out. And that was the worst. I had to tell him, and it's like, but still days he just be he be off because you know, and I don't know what to say to him because I ain't you know I ain't never lose a kid. So thankful that you know you got freeway, you got Dow, you got everybody that came through. That was just that was just like helping this shit out, and they dads that lost their kids. So it's like. I can't, I didn't know what to say. I ain't know what to say. Because you just don't. And then it's still times, it's fucked up because I used to talk to Gil about cheese all the time. I used to be like, yo, cheese this, that, 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 cheese this. And we used to, you know, he did anything, but it's like, you know, you're a father, you just be feeling fucked up because it's like, did I do my job enough? And you did, but it's, and I always tell him, like, yo, you did a great job, man. You was doing your shit. Cause I'm still penalizing myself because it's like I had to tell him the craziest shit in the world, man. Like, you know what I mean? That was the craziest shit I had to tell somebody. <laughs> and it fucked me up, man. It fucked me up for a minute. Still a little bother me because it's like <laughs> you tell somebody their son ain't here no more and that's a f That's crazy, man. That's crazy. I never had to tell nobody nothing like that. <laughs> you know, you know, you can hear things through somebody else, but to tell somebody that, it's like, damn, man. It, it really bothered me, but it's like, I just, you know, I just see it in him when he would, you know, with, with his son, he'd just be, and it's an issue, it's something that never go away, you know? You know, as a parent, you know, losing a kid, and I don't think sometimes kids understand the effect when they go before their parents, and it's like, just me seeing it, me sitting there on a step, and there's six, seven brothers out there, and I'm sitting on the side, and I'm all hearing them about how they lost their sons and shit to the street culture, it's fucked up, man. It's just like, it's just crazy, man. And it's like, you just don't want to, uh, I don't know, man. I, so to the youngest out there, man, if you got a pop out there, you know, because a lot of times you always, you know, you never hear about the pops. Like, if you got a pop, man, get up under your dad, man, soak some game up, man. If things wrong, see if y'all can make it right. If y'all can, y'all can. If y'all can't, y'all can. Y'all got a step pop, y'all got somebody. But, man, I'm going to just, I'm going to just, man, it's just crazy, man. I, I don't want to, I don't want to keep rapping, man. I'm going to leave y'all, but I just want to say, man, just, it costs too much to be a criminal. It costs yeah. too much to be in the streets, and it's just like, man, if if you can make it out, make it out. Uh, yeah. And if you get out the car, get out the car because things might go wrong, man. And you never know when you know the bullets come and bullets ain't got no names, you know. But uh, to see somebody bury their son, man. Yeah, man. I'm gonna give a special shout out to uh, once again the freeway, of course, to Wallow, man, who's my cousin, but he more like my brother. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Meek Mills, the whole team for pulling up. 
Tau, uh, Danny, Danny Garcia, Danny Garcia, uh, my uh, son, Ab Lava, my son, Ab uh, Lava. Everybody that came to the funeral. Everybody Spado, that was there. Appreciate Speezy, you, brother. Uh, uh, Mike Knox, Mike Knox. I love uh, you, brother. Everybody, bump, bump. I love uh, you, brother. Uh, 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 I'm talking about so many names. Pop tracks, at pop the tracks. I love you, brother. <laughs> it was a lot of people, man, that showed love, and it's like a anybody that I forgot. You know what I mean? That that you pulled up on me. On them days, G Jen, I love you, brother. Yeah, Jen, everybody, t everybody was t here, man. You already know, man. But uh, to everybody that pulled up on me and uh, spread that love, I felt it, and I appreciate y'all. So um, yeah, and it's just like that, right? <laughs>